Hey writing gang, Roadside Writer here to hit you with another literary treat. If you saw my protagonist recipe video, you have an idea what you're in for. If you haven't, grab your apron, yes, I mean it, and get ready to cook up an awesome writing recipe. Special of the day, a conflict. So what is a conflict? Glad you asked. A conflict is one of the most important forces in a story. Without one, you don't even really have a story. Not a good one, anyway. A conflict serves three very important purposes. Probably more, but I'm gonna stick with three. A conflict generates tension, causes the protagonist to grow, and drives the plot towards its conclusion. Without those things, you're gonna have a pretty damn boring story. Let's take an overview of some of the ingredients you'll need to cook up a conflict with me today. Some dry some wet, but what are they? And what do they do for your story? Let's find out. We'll start with setting, because the setting of your story should affect every aspect of your conflict in some way. If it doesn't, then why is the story happening here? Setting should be chosen with intention to help drive the plot of your story and enrich the conflict. In this little bag here, we have everything that's super interesting about your setting. We're gonna rip that open because if you were to just eat this by itself, it'd be too potent and strong. Now you're gonna take this and mix it in throughout your story. Interesting location plus some story building equals your setting. Make sure to mix this in thoroughly. You don't want your setting to be dumped on someone all at once. It should be spread throughout the story. Take your setting and place it in the fridge to cool while we work on the rest of the recipe. Now it's time to mix the dry base of your conflict. Make sure to get a deep enough bowl because you're gonna have to beat it up a little bit. Things are gonna get rough in here. But I mean, isn't that the whole point of a conflict? The majority of your dry mix is gonna be made up of your conflict type. We're gonna add a cup and a half. There are three major types of conflict, which would be man versus man, man versus nature, or man versus self. For the purpose of this recipe, we're gonna include aspects of all three. So I've labeled this ingredient as the general conflict type. Many good stories have elements of all three conflict types, with one taking dominance over the other two. Now we're going to toss in a quarter cup of your protagonist's goal. This helps your readers sympathize with your protagonist. It makes them enjoy more when your protagonist achieves the goal they set for themselves. It also gives them empathy for that character when they don't achieve their goal as a result of the conflict of the story. Now we're going to add three setbacks that prevent your protagonist from achieving their goal as the story goes on. You'll notice that these three setbacks are different. It wouldn't be very fun to watch your protagonist deal with the same problem three different times throughout the story. You definitely need to shake it up and make sure each of these setbacks presents its own unique challenges and growth opportunities for your protagonist. We're going to hit them with a tablespoon of each. You'll remember one of the main functions of a conflict is to help your protagonist grow, which is the purpose of adding this, a teaspoon and a half of character growth to your conflict. For this next part, you're going to need to get your chilled setting out of the fridge Enter the antagonist. Remember this jerk? Not really though, he's an essential part of the plot. He may be the biggest creator of setbacks for your protagonists in your conflict. Or maybe he's just an agent used to flesh out the nefarious nature of your setting. Maybe your antagonist is even a dramatic foil for your protagonist to show how they're really their own biggest setback on their way to their goal. No matter what the reason, you'll always have at least a minor antagonist in your story, or at least you probably should. Let's go ahead and add two tablespoons of your antagonist to your setting. As you'd imagine, these two things are often tied closely together. Give it a good swirl. Now it's time to combine it all together. You'll find as you work on your conflict that it starts out pretty easy to mix together. As the story goes on, it's gonna get a little rough. It's gonna get rough for your main character, and that means it's gonna get rough for you. You're going to have to do some things you don't agree with to help them grow. Hard work really frightens you, 
feel free to wait for a friendly woodland creature to wander along and pawn your work off on them. If you're not so fortunate, get ready to get your hands in the mess and rough it up. That's right, you've got to need this conflict for about three minutes. This really symbolizes what you're about to put your protagonist through. You're going to have to get your hands dirty. You might have to take away the things they love. You might need to make them fall so hard they struggle to get back up. You might even need to end a few lives. In your story, I mean. Yep, three whole minutes of needing. Hope you're ready to watch that. Mm. Once your conflict is all nice and firmed up, it's time to put it into shape. Think to yourself, what do you want readers to get out of this story? A lesson? Inspiration? A touching emotional moment? Once you've figured out what you want readers to get out of your story, you know exactly what shape to put your conflict in to make sure they get it. Now give it to them. Think of this as your plot, or the shape your conflict needs to fit into. As long as your conflict fits well in your plot, it'll serve all three of the major roles it's supposed to. Generating tension, helping your protagonist grow, and driving the plot towards its conclusion. Now we're ready to cook. Whatever you do, make sure you wrap these better than I did. It's about time to cook up a conflict. To cook these, we're gonna make a little steam. Ooh. Now with everything loaded up, it's time to start your story. No matter how much you plan and outline, con your conflict will probably go at least a little bit off the rails. And that's alright. Let your story have a little bit of a life of its own. So long as you show it who's boss every once in a while. Hey, stay in line. While your conflict cooks, sit down and think about what you've done. The lives you've ruined. That you've taken dreams you've crushed, protagonists you've permanently maimed physically or emotionally. Take a break from your existential crisis to flip your conflict in 15 minutes. Halfway done. What did I tell you about taking on a life of its own? It would have helped if I wrapped it better. Once it's remotely cool enough that you'll only get second degree burns, cut off a slice of your conflict to try for yourself. Creating a functional conflict that serves both to tug the heartstrings and develop character is really hard work. So enjoy the fruits of your labor over salads, pasta, rice, in wraps, or whatever the hell you want. Mm. Delicious. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, check out my other writing recipe all about protagonists and my other writing help videos. I've got interactive activities, crimes of writing, all kinds of fun stuff. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to The Roadside Writer to support my claim on world domination to support future writing help. Roadside Writer, out.